Hello, and welcome to Thriving Together. This is a collaboration between Beverly Senior Center and BevCam, our local TV station, to introduce you to, I guess, topics of interest to our citizens over 60. So thank you for being together. Our, my guest today is Sharon Cohen, and I want to tell you how we met, because I think this is an example of thriving together. Decades ago, I met her husband on the train as we were both commuting to Boston daily. We had these 15-minute conversations every day for months. And we would occasionally mention our spouses. And when he talked about Sharon, she sounded so interesting to me. So I said to him, do you think you and Sharon would like to come over to our house some night for dinner? We made that happen, and we have been friends ever since. So this is my friend, Sharon Cohen, and she is here today to talk about a group that she organized a couple of years ago called the Death Cafe. Tell us, Sharon, what is the Death Cafe? Well, the Death Cafe is an international, I won't call it an organization, it's an international idea that's been out there for about 20 years. And you can look it up in the internet, and there are meetings that are listed. But there are a lot of uh, people who have more private death cafes. And I have one I don't advertise because um, I, I like, I can't handle everything that comes down the pike. <laughs> so I sort of keep it a little bit quieter. Um, but a death cafe is simply a place where people socialize, drink coffee and tea or whatever, have cookies and cake, and talk about all aspects of death and loss. And ours has been going on about a year and a half. Um, we do talk about, we started out talking about our own deaths, um, what we want, what we don't want. And what I very quickly discovered that is that, that people really wanted to talk about their losses. Mm. More than anything else, they weren't so afraid at our age. The, the fear of actually dying is still there and people talk about it, but um, they talk more about the people they've lost. And lately we talk about aging and some of the things that are lost in aging. Mm -hmm. So it's, if I had to rename it, which I don't intend to do, yeah. uh, if I had to rename it, I think I would call it the Cafe of a Million Losses. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I, I like know. that. Maybe we should write a poem about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So I, I want to say, when I first heard about it, I thought, yes, I want to go to this. I want to attend. Yeah. And I felt a little apprehensive thinking it's going to be somber, dull, sad. It's none of those things. No. The one thing I think I want people to know about this, if they've never experienced, is we laugh a lot. Oh, it's rowdy. Right, it's rowdy. <laughs> we laugh a lot. We laugh a lot. Yeah, so... Uh, something I think I want to go to next is this is not an invitation for people to join your death cafe. Right, because I still don't want it publicly advertised. Though I will say that if somebody wants to start their own death cafe and they contact you, I will share any materials I have. You know, my introductory letter, um, Beautiful. some of my ideas for... I. In the very beginning, I was overzealous about uh, creating packets of questions around themes, and very quickly, people, I didn't have any trouble getting people to talk. People came and they wanted to talk, they knew what they wanted to talk about, so I send out a reminder every month where I propose two suggested themes and, and or whatever you want to speak about. So if people wanted, you know, some ideas, mm -hmm. you know, if they contact you, I will share freely. Okay. Thank but I you. would encourage Thank you. people to start their own groups. Yes. Our yes. group started uh, when I looked around for a venue. Um, we were offered a, 
a real cafe. Uh, somebody incredibly generously said, uh, I run a cafe, we close at three, and then my staff cleans up for two hours. Why don't you meet after we close up? And so for the first year and a half, we met once a month at the cafe, bought our coffee and some snacks, but had the cafe to ourselves. And the cafe is now closed, so we're meeting temporarily in a church basement, which you were there yes. last month. It's yes. fine. Yes. I really like it that is. space. It is. It's fine. Um, and they were incredibly welcoming. The pastor, who I'm not a member of that church, um, when I sort of approached her cold and proposed that we at least meet there temporarily for the summer, um, consulted her board and came back and said, every single one of them said, this is exactly what we exist for. Good, good, I mean, good. it was incredibly welcoming. Good. So... Um, I, I want to take a minute to describe my experience yes. at, just as a participant. Yeah. So we meet about once a month. Mm -hmm. There's probably... 18 to 20 people there? I would say anywhere like from 12 to 18. I 12 to 18. 18 was okay. our high point. Yeah. And when, and, and we self sort ourselves when we get there into two or three tables. Because, I do a little directing. Oh, okay. You know, because everybody wants to sit at that one first right. table till right. there's 20 people and, you know, we're deaf and we're screaming at each other. You know, yeah. I, I sort of say, well, we've got to. Yeah. And, and people do then sort themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, it, it wouldn't work well with even a dozen people at the same table. We, it no. needs to be smaller because yeah. it's about discussion. Yeah, and so, six, six is good. Yes, six yes. Six is good. So, Eight is so pretty So we end maximum. up doing that. Yeah. Yes, and what I, my experience of it is that some of the same people come every time, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of variation. Who come and go. Yeah. A, and I also don't remember names, yeah. which most of us are in that same boat. So we, uh, you know, we might reintroduce ourselves at whatever is needed. And it's not so much planned, but somebody at each table usually starts the conversation someplace. Yeah. So the effect is that it feels unorganized, but in a good way that we can just move along as we want. Yeah. But Sharon is the organizer of it and does a variety of things to keep us going. Yeah, I brought the cookies last night. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. right, yeah, right, she yeah. brought the no, cookies. No, I have, a, yeah. I have an overarching responsibility kind of for, for it. Uh, but you're right, when one table goes to the other end of the room and I'm in this table over here, mm -hmm. I have no idea what the discussion is. Um, I hear about it later, but uh, people are, it's, it's not a discussion group where there's a leader, and it certainly is not medicalized. It's not, oh, we're going to discuss death, we need to get a therapist who's going to lead this discussion. And right. um, it's, it's a social group. It's a mm -hmm. social discussion group. Mm -hmm. And to the, uh, the point of whether or not it's somber, I talk this up a lot, you know, I, when I'm in any of my other lives. And one man said to me, he said, oh, my God, do people sit around and cry? And I said, well, they're free to. You know, people have cried. Yeah. Um, but mainly, especially when we were in the cafe, I'd have to quiet people down. That's you right. Know, That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Um, because it really is rowdy. And it's rowdy because it's a real relief. Right. It's an incredible relief uh, to say openly, and there's an amazing thing, a number of things people don't say openly about death and about their own fears and about their losses. And You're talking about in general we don't talk about it. In general we don't talk about it at all. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I've heard people tell stories about deaths and use the word pass away when there's nothing passing away about the death they just described. Right, right. I mean, the word is died or was killed or, you know, not mm -hmm. pass away. I mean, there's a, a real tendency to minimize anything we say mm -hmm. and make it and sanitize it. Mm -hmm. And when you're there talking, it's a real discussion. Mm 
Mm -hmm. it, you know this. Yes, yes. It's a real, yes. real discussion with real issues. And at the point, th and there is a lot of laughter, uh, but there was one discussion where a woman talked about the death of her grandson, and everybody at the table, no one said anything. They just reached out and touched her. The whole table touched her. Um, there are just moments that yeah. are so supportive and so touching. Right. That... No, you know, I've, I, yeah, yeah. I've, I've experienced that very deeply. And it's not because I'm, I know the people who show up. It's not because I know them well. Mm -hmm. I might have met them yeah. once or twice there, but it's not that. And it's almost, like, it's almost like we're starting as strangers. But because you give us each month, I'm going to say, three yeah. possible topics. Yeah. And... It, not as a requirement, but just as a suggestion that if we don't know where to begin. Yeah. So one month, or at least one month, we talked about cemeteries and, you know, how do we want, yeah. what do we want to happen after our death? Um, we talked about natural cemeteries, yeah. and I, yeah. that's not the right word, but... Uh, yeah, green cemeteries. Green cemeteries. Yeah. So yeah. Th that was really interesting to, to think yeah. about. Uh, yeah. All, all of that. And my experience is that mostly we start talking about one of the topics that you've brought up. That starts us on something. So um, can you kind of go through some list of I do what have. topics you've suggested? Because I'm not remembering right now what I'm doing <laughs> Remember last month's with change. That was, there yes. was both change and gratitude uh, were the suggested yes. topics last month, and I don't think anybody in either group discussed gratitude. They, there was a lot of talk. There was a lot of talk about changes, you know. Whether and we had a couple of people from one of the uh, uh, senior living communities come, and that was a change that they were talking about. Uh, you know, losing your uh, driver's license. You know, not being able to. Uh, um, you know, do the physical activities anymore you used to do. And it's not like, oh, wow, 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 you know, I can't do mm -hmm. this anymore. It's, you know, this is, this is what aging is doing, and this is how I'm compensating, and these are the pleasures I'm finding. Mm -hmm. um, but that was one. Change was right. a really good discussion. Um, blooming again. Can we come back from our losses? Uh, I had a friend come, and she was in the other group, um, and first of all, she said that she, she, she was a therapist uh, before she retired, and she said that she had never been in a group that both welcomed her as readily and dropped right to a level of intimacy in what they were talking about quite as, as, as easily. That's right. But she brought up in that group that she had a lover. And apparently that group perked right up. <laughs> <laughs> and there were a lot of questions there. Um, uh, memory uh, was one, alive mm -hmm. in memory. We do a lot of stuff with, uh, uh, you know, what we miss, mm -hmm. our losses and what we miss. Regret comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I had done this when my husband was dying. I wish I had known this. I wish mm -hmm. I had said this. You know, regret just comes back over and over and right, over again. Right. Um, well, aging. Yeah. Yeah, aging. Or, I, so yeah, I, I want to. I want to go to changing, change. Um, I had just experienced making the decision to stop driving. That's a big deal for me. I'm an activist. I'm active in many things. It's a big deal things. for everybody. Oh, it, it is. It yeah. is. And I, it, there's something about this group that. I don't think I could describe in advance what my expectations were or what my, expe what my expectations ever are. But what, what I experienced from the group of people who don't really know me was recognition of what a big deal it was, whether they have gone through that or not, but recognition of what a big deal it is. And to have this group that you can meet with and immediately feel comfortable sharing 
whatever it is that's going on in your life, there's something wonderful and powerful about that. So I want to express my gratitude oh, to you, you, Sharon, you. for setting up this environment. I was, I was told more than once, but recently, that I don't chit-chat, that I don't ever chit-chat, you know. You know, and it's true. I don't care what kind of curtains you bought last week. <laughs> you know, I want to know the secrets of your soul. That's what I want to know. And I think that the, the people, and they're mostly women. We have a couple of men who come, but mm -hmm. mostly older women. Um, what they seem to re be responding to and what they share with me is we don't chit-chat about your curtains. We go right. right for what is it that... Right that's in your life, that's motivating your life, that's important to you that you're yeah. going to talk about. Yeah. So let me change the direction of the conversation a little bit. For my experience as a participant is that anybody can participate. However, there have been a couple people that I've invited who have just come once, been silent through the whole thing and not come back. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's not going to be appealing to everybody. You know, no, nothing right. is. Right. And when I think about what you have done, Sharon, that makes this so effective, one of the things I'm really aware of is that each month you send out an email with suggesting three yeah. possible yeah. topics, yeah. and you provide in that email all of the information we need. Sure. We don't have to, I don't think we have to RSVP, just people show yeah. up who yeah. can and want to. Yeah. Um, so what... I send it out twice, by the way. Okay, thank you. I send you. it out, the, okay. the first, if we meet the third Tuesday of the month, I send it out the first week, and I send it out the week before. Okay. Because Good. just yeah. to jog people, and I send yeah. out pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. So for somebody, if any of our listeners or watchers are thinking, maybe I'd want to do this, something I'm aware of that the lead person would need is good organizational skills. Mm -hmm. Right. What else do you think that person needs to get? Oh, I think you need some perseverance started. because when you first start setting anything up, you know, you're going to get four people, you know, or you're going to mm -hmm. get 15 people and 10 of them aren't going to come back. Mm -hmm. And I have had people, I, I sign people up all the time, mm -hmm. put them on the email list. Um, and I've had people ask to be taken off the email list. You know, they're not going to come back. This isn't for them. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to not take it. You know, it's an idea that right. not everybody wants to participate in, right. or it's not, um, you know, it is not what people thought it was going to be. One of the things, I think you also have to have a very clear idea of what your goal is. And my goal is incredibly simple. It is to orchestrate a space where people can socialize and talk freely about all aspects of death and loss. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, when we first started, uh, and you have to be able to, you know, sort of listen to what other people want and where they want to go, too. But um, in the beginning, there were a lot of suggestions about uh, having guest speakers, having uh, lawyers in to talk about wills, having somebody help write obituaries, having a nurse in to speak about what happens when you die. Um, there actually was somebody who came about the Green Cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, she just came as a participant. Um, and it, it very... I kind of resisted that because you can get that elsewhere. Right. There are seminars right. at the library and wherever mm -hmm. else about those things. What people really wanted to do was talk. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to talk, and they wanted to hear. And there's a wonderful moment when you say something that really kind of hurts you to say a little bit, that's a little scary to say, and you see six people nod. There's a, a yes. wonderful moment yes. when you understand that you're not different. Right. You're not aberrant. Right. Um, so, yes, I think you have to have a clear vision of what you're doing, some organizational skills, and the ability to persevere even in the months you know, like November and December when holidays are going on, when it's a very small group, mm -hmm. to, 
to persevere. Right, yeah. right. And what, Sharon, when we were talking a, a, a little bit about this ahead of time, you mentioned a particular group that was not open to this idea. Oh, when you were looking for, the when very you were looking, first venue. yes, yeah. when you were looking for places to have these these conversations. Tell, tell us about that. Oh, the, the woman who got me involved in this was a, a neighbor who was a hospice chaplain who I would talk to about my brother and sister's deaths. Um, they didn't die together, but they had both died. And um, she suggested this because she said, you know, people don't talk like this about death. And I said, oh, everybody talks like this. She said, oh, no, they don't. So when I started to set this up and I was looking for a venue, the very first place that I thought uh, would have us, it was ideal for us, um, turned us down. Uh, they were concerned with the liability that, you know, could I guarantee that people wouldn't leave a discussion about death and kill themselves, <laughs> which seemed to me odd living in a culture steeped in death. I mean, it's all around us. Um, not the first time people have heard about it. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted nothing to do with it. And it, I was shocked. And then as I, I did then luck into this venue in the cafe and have since had a couple of other offers, um, you have to balance a little bit, you know, is there parking? Is there handicapped access? Mm -hmm. um, um, kind of issues like that. But... Um, Yes. And, and, and I would say there's something good about being relatively consistent from one yes. time to the next about having it in the same place yes. so that people yes. don't have to think about, oh, where is it now? And yes. also the timing. Yes. Is it the third? It's the third th Tuesday. The third of the Tuesday. Month. It has been. We've, we've, we've changed. We've changed the timing a little bit for this space, and we may. Yeah. We're in a we're in a period of transition in terms of where we're going to land permanently, but we will land somewhere right. permanently. And then right. you're right, absolute consistency, and send out those memos twice, twice a, a month. month. Twice <laughs> a month. <laughs> right. So when I think about Beverly and what would be a good home for a death cafe here, the first thing that comes to mind is the senior center. Yeah, what yeah. what place could oh, be more first, perfect? You want you what? want free, free, free. <laughs> you want, yes, you yes, want free yes, or yes. Uh, the place we are now. We're in a church basement. Um, is by donation, right? You know, set out the can and and people were generous this month. Let me good, tell you, good, good, yeah. Because um, I think we're appreciative yes, of, having of having a place. A space. And and I think also the way that it's done. If somebody wants to throw in 50 cents and another person $5, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Nobody's looking at yeah. who's and, throwing in And I don't feel what. the church is saying, well, it yeah. was only yeah. this this month. Right, right, you know, right. I think that's... So other places I think of are possibly the library. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's relatively accessible. Yeah. We want something that's easy for people to get to. Mm -hmm. Where they can park. Right. And where they can get from parking to the door. Right. Without walking too far. Right. Right. And um, that has tables and chairs. Right. I, I don't think somebody's home in general, somebody's home might not be the best place, but maybe it would if somebody had the right place. We've been hearing uh, about other kinds of death cafes and somebody mentioned uh, that the Peabody Essex Museum holds virtual ones. Zoom, um, Zoom death cafe meetings. Oh. I would rather be in person, but right, you know, right. but that's one possibility. And one person told me um, about a friend of hers who was uh, doing dinner parties. Yes, which yes. <laughs> you know is yes. not. I mean, I can barely go to the grocery store and get the cookies, <laughs> uh, so that's not right. going to be what I do. Right, but I think you could. Whatever way you can right. get a group of people together, and if you have a living space and you, you know, you want to have something the size of a book club, you right. could do it. You could do it. You could yeah. do it. Well, I want to say something about Zoom. I've actually participated a, a, a couple of years ago. I started in a Zoom death cafe that was f f um, throughout New England, uh -huh. and 
I found that to be quite satisfying yep. until you came along, and my preference is in person. Yeah. But it worked. Yeah. It worked. Even even on Zoom, it yeah. worked. Yeah. So there's a variety of po yeah. possibilities. It's, like I said, it's not an organization, and you don't have to do it exactly the way it's been laid out. It's an right. idea. Right. And you do it the way it's going to be easiest for you because that has a better chance of surviving and right, it's easier. Right, right. Yeah, so anybody who's watching, if you're thinking, I might want to do this, feel free to contact me. Sure. And w Sharon has said she'll, she's happy to yeah. pass along all of the different suggestions that she's had and the, I the ideas that she's had. So if you're thinking about it, call me. Call me and let, and, and let yeah. me know. What, what else do we want to say about this that we haven't said yet? How much time do we have left? A oh, minute. We're, we're getting a minute. There. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this was not my idea in the beginning. It was the, the woman who had been talking to me, the hospice chaplain. And she dropped out because her mother was ill. And so I had an idea that wasn't mine. And I have to say that I have totally owned it. I, I mm -hmm. have gotten so much satisfaction out of this group mm -hmm. that I can't imagine not doing it at this right. point. Right, um, Yeah. But, um, I'm just thinking Brooksby Village might be a oh, good place yes. for this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and, and I also have a quite elderly uncle who lives in a senior housing community who has wanted to start one and then he got a an intern chaplain to start one they signed up a group and when they opened the doors there were people down the hallway um so they had to do more than one group um that one person who had started it then left and the group uh, faltered sometimes it takes one person right it takes it it takes one strong person to keep right. something going right um but i i think that uh, uh Senior living um, places would be ideal. Ideal, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much for being together with us for this episode of Thriving Together. My guest today is Sharon Cohen. Pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Death Cafe, it's, it's a good thing. It's happy. There's a lot of laughter. <laughs>